There's nothing more satisfying than when an old mystery is solved. Back in 2013, the bones of English King Richard III were found buried beneath a parking lot in Leicester, England. This discovery laid to rest the 600-year-old question that had shrouded this monarch ever since he was portrayed as a hunchback by William Shakespeare in the late 16th century. When King Richard's bones were exhumed and laid out, it proved that he did indeed suffer from scoliosis. History is not the only realm where old mysteries can be solved many years after the event. So too can scientific mysteries. And that is what we are here today to discover. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, where today we will look at the event recorded in the annals of history as the Tunguska Explosion and the recently emerged theory that explains the cataclysmic event that shook Siberia almost 100 years ago. On the 30th of June in 1908, in a desolate part of Siberia near the Tunguska River, there was a massive explosion in the forest that was so strong that it laid waste to an area of land 830 miles square. Some miles away, the few people who inhabited this remote area reported feeling as if some unseen force was pushing them to the ground with searing heat. These people farmed reindeer, and hundreds of their livestock were killed in this explosion. We only know of this retrospectively, however, thanks to an intrepid scientist named Leonid Kulik, who tried in vain to visit the explosion site 13 years after the event, and then successfully in 1927. What he and his team found was astonishing. The trees at Ground Zero still stood upright, yet were scorched and stripped of their branches. Further outward, the trees were laid flat on the ground. The number of destroyed trees is estimated in the millions. Initially, eyewitnesses were reluctant to discuss their experiences with Kulik, believing that the explosion was a result of the wrath of an ancient pagan god. When people were ready to talk, one eyewitness told Kulik that on the day of the explosion, he was in his cabin some 40 miles away when he saw the sky split in two and then fill with fire. He said that there was an intense heat from the explosion that made it feel as if his shirt was on fire. Then there was a loud thump, and the sky turned black. The man was thrown to the ground. It sounded as if cannons were firing, and rocks fell all around the cabin where the man and his wife lived. Other reports told of a bluish light as bright as the sun moving across the sky. Hundreds of miles away, people were knocked off their feet and their windows shattered into pieces. A dust haze could be seen all over Europe after the impact. People who lived as far away as Asia could read their newspapers at night under the glow reflected from the dust haze. Even some barometers in England registered shockwaves. Kulik's explanation for this explosion was that an asteroid had hit the Earth. According to NASA, an asteroid is a rocky formation left over from the formation of our solar system 4.6 billion years ago. Despite all of the geophysical phenomena to suggest an asteroid, no point of impact was ever found. How could this be, that there was evidence of an asteroid, yet no evidence of an asteroid at the same time? The leading accepted answer to this conundrum was that this asteroid exploded just before it made impact. Scientists call this an airburst. For this to have been the case, the asteroid would have weighed 220 million pounds, been traveling at 33,500 miles per hour, heated the surrounding air to 44,500 degrees Fahrenheit, and self-annihilated at 28,000 feet this would have released 185 Hiroshima's worth of energy. Another theory was that the object was a comet made of ice, and it melted prior to impact. But this theory does not explain why eyewitnesses saw the sky split in two and heard a massive explosion. Yet neither of these theories were truly satisfactory, and the Tunguska explosion was considered something of an astronomical cold case. However, a new theory was brought to light in 2020 when a team of scientists from the Siberian Federal University postulated that it was indeed an asteroid that caused the Tunguska explosion, but it did not explode before impact. Rather, the team believed that the asteroid traveled through our atmosphere for 435 miles at a shallow angle and grazed the Earth before passing out again and back into space. This hypothesis is called the glancing impact hypothesis. This team of Russian scientists worked on a number of possible scenarios in which the asteroid was made of ice, iron, or rock. They also calculated various travel speeds for it. The scientists calculated that if the object was made of ice, it would have melted after traveling through the atmosphere for 186 miles. Remember that eyewitness accounts and simulations showed that the object traveled further than that through the atmosphere. This cancels out the ice comet theory explanation of the Tunguska explosion. It was worked out that the asteroid which caused the Tunguska explosion was an iron asteroid, measuring 200 meters in diameter, making the asteroid the size of a football field and traveling at a speed of 6.9 miles per second. This theory postulates that the object entered our atmosphere, 
heated up ferociously to the extent that an enormous booming force flattened the surrounding trees and then bounced away from the earth. This satisfies the question of why there was no crater and why there was a dust haze over Europe in the months that followed Tunguska. Particles of dust from the asteroid hung in the air long after the explosion. The Tunguska explosion also poses the terrifying consideration of what if? What if an asteroid of that magnitude had indeed collided with our planet? Don Yeoman of NASA, whose job is to plot the course of near-Earth asteroids, says that statistically, an asteroid the size of the Tunguska asteroid will enter our atmosphere once every 300 years. It is estimated that three people died in the Tunguska explosion. Indeed, it was fortunate that it happened in such a remote and uninhabited part of the world. But the team at Siberian Federal University offered the sobering thought that if this asteroid had indeed hit our planet, then it would have had a horrific impact on the biosphere, enough to potentially threaten civilization itself. In 2016, NASA warned that we are unprepared for this type of event, and then in 2018, a spokesperson from the B612 Foundation stated that it is a 100% certainty that the Earth will be struck by an asteroid of this magnitude, but we simply don't know when. Adding to this is megamind Stephen Hawking's take, who considered asteroid collisions the biggest threat to our planet. The scientific community also provided the public with the sobering thought that asteroids are much harder to destroy or redirect than once believed, and it would take at least five years to plan for an event of this type. Asteroid impact avoidance is the term describing methods used by international space agencies to destroy near-Earth objects. There are several strategies that have been proposed by scientists in the event of an asteroid colliding with our planet. One strategy, referred to as fragmentation, proposes to break up or fragment the asteroid so that the smaller pieces would either burn up in the atmosphere or miss the Earth altogether. Another strategy focuses on either slowing down or speeding up the movement of the asteroid so that it misses the Earth. Other proposed strategies include the use of nuclear explosive devices to deflect the object away from the Earth. One example of this type of technology is the European Space Agency's HERA project. HERA will attempt to deflect an asteroid moonlet named Dimorphos, which orbits around a much larger asteroid called Didymus. Dimorphos is the size of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. In 2024, the HERA spacecraft will travel into space and try to shift the moonlet's orbit. Although Dimorphos is not a threat to our planet, this experiment is aimed at testing the ability to redirect an asteroid that one day might be. What is certainly not an option is shooting an asteroid down. NASA acknowledges that there is no known weapon system that could stop an asteroid in this way due to the speed at which it travels, which is an average of 12 miles per second. So we watch and wait, and hope that space agencies around the globe have the technology to save us from a cataclysmic event that could make the Tunguska explosion look like a Sunday school picnic. Meanwhile, the United Nations endorsed Asteroid Day gives the scientific community and the public at large an opportunity to discuss the potential opportunities and risks that asteroids provide our civilization. And the date is celebrated? June 30th, the date when in 1908 our planet experienced the biggest near miss in recent memory. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.